Good evening. So nice for you to come and join us again. Um, my guest that we're going to get to here in just a few minutes uh, is a repeat guest. And uh, before we get to this, I would like to share some um, the news crop circles with you. Well, actually, I could introduce my guest first, and then we'll share the crop circles. How is that? OK. OK. Um, Monica is a repeat guest. Uh, you have met her in a show. It was called Strangeness Times Two. And the other one was two for one. And so that's probably why you came back for the second time. Yeah, another two for. Another two for something. How's that? <laughs> OK. And um, do you have a nice flight? I did. It was actually, we had a tailwind. And it was normally a three and a half hour flight. They did it in two and a half hours. It was wonderful. So you have a, another hour you can do twice. Yeah. Yeah, well, I hope not. <laughs> I don't want to make it up on the way back. And if you notice, we both watch wearing two watches. Mm -hmm. That's so we can keep track of ourselves. And where I'm at. And where you're at. And where my others are. <laughs> That's a good one. So keep that thought, please. <laughs> uh, what I like to do is, um, as you know, I am, an, I am a networker for the Crop Circle Connector in England. And these are some of the newest crop circles that came in for 1999, and uh, you can access those by going to my web page that is listed at the end of the show. Now, this came in on the 1st of July, and they named that the Scarab. I think I got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes they're hard to hold because they're so thin. They are just beautiful. All in all, they had 66 uh, circles that I know of. By the 1st of July, wasn't by the, it? Yeah, by the 1st of July. And um, so, of course, now there are a lot more. So that is one. And then I'm going to exchange that for another one. This one came in, this one came in July 6th. I like this one. Yeah. That one has 16 sides to it, 16 mm -hmm. depths. It's great, isn't it? Mm -hmm. OK, and then the next one came in on July 7th. Now, that is one that I really like. It's one of my favorites mm -hmm. as well. I'm not sure, but I, it reminded me of the levels of um, the dimensional levels, the levels of consciousness. We counted them, didn't it? We had we found twelve triangles in there. Yeah, because and that was for just a start. Um, yes, because it's twelve levels of consciousness that we can achieve on Earth. Because once we go to the thirteenth, then we are no longer here. And then we have this one. Now you, you know that one reminds me of the wheels you see on some of the the cars around town. <laughs> The mag wheels. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So maybe that means speed. Who knows? Mm -hmm. It's really fun to try to decipher some of these. And here, this one, it doesn't say when this one came in, but we've had this one on several occasions. So once they come back every year, you just say, oh, it's that one again, you know. Mm -hmm. And this year, they are hooking them together like in sentences. Yeah. Mm hmm and on the website, there's quite a bit of uh, descriptive um, paragraphs and mm -hmm. naming them and telling them, deciphering some of them for, for general information. Mm -hmm. And that's the scarab that has been shown up for many, many years. Mm -hmm. OK, well, we hope you enjoyed this little tour of the 1999 crop circles. And we have an upcoming show where some of the researchers are going to come and visit with you and show you the real pictures. Now, a little earlier when I said hold that thought, um, there was a reason, because the show, the name of the show today is A Wave Named Chaos. And um, what we're trying to do today is talk about chaos a little bit and uh, how we can work around it and things like that. And it's for that reason that things is a little out of order here today, hopefully. And um, chaotic. 
<laughs> chaotic. We, may, we, we, we what we was aiming for not to put things very straight because we wanted mm -hmm. it to be a little chaotic. Now, what we did, we interviewed several people, mm -hmm. uh, several local people to see what their definition, uh, you know, randomly, what their definition is of chaos. And so maybe we could play that first and then build on that. Hmm? Yeah, I'd like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. These, these were people that we just randomly picked. So we'll go to the clip and well, see. Well, there's a lady uh, that we caught outside of a beauty shop, and she's so gorgeous. So what we are asking people today is, what is chaos to you? What is chaos to me? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, going down the freeway and people not moving over and cutting you off. <laughs> Do you have any suggestions how to fix it? What would you like to see happen to fix it? No, <laughs> we're not usually used to freeways. We're not from here, so. Oh, where are you from? South Lake Tahoe. Well, you have a, you drive like crazy there too, so. Not really. There, there's no freeways there. Just regular roads. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, if you was in charge for one day, what would you tell people to do to get rid of the chaos? On the freeways? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> and what would I do? Tell them to slow down, take their time. And, and not hog up the uh, fast lane. That's good. Watch out for the people. Uh -huh. And how many people are in the car, and you know, just drive safe. Okay, well, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Every day I came to the club for cat food and asked people about uh, chaos, and I ran into a group of young people that. Well, you tell us what you're doing. We are biking to Brazil. If you could speak up a little bit. We're biking to Brazil. Biking to Brazil. Yes. And you left Seattle? Yeah, we left Seattle about nine days ago. Uh-huh. Taking our time. Uh-huh. Speaking of chaos, there's a lot of it in the city. Not a lot of space for young people to think and be creative. Uh-huh. So rather than complain, we just intend on going to a higher plane. That's wonderful. That's all the, the theme of our show here. Um, trying to show people alternative methods on working around yes. your pay, chaos. So, uh, if you could send a message to the rest of the world, what would it be? Sustainability. Oh. It's time for us to realize that the seeds that we're planting won't produce more seeds that we can plant again, not only in our fields, but in our communities, in our businesses, in our schools, in our families, in our relationships, and in our minds. It's time to grow seeds that we can plant and grow again. And if you were a plant in this Western world, the question that my group has, Deva Shakti, is how would you grow yourself? That is wonderful. I'm going to take a shot of your friends here. And there are no coincidences, so that's probably why we ran into you. <laughs> so when uh, people don't know where they're going and don't know what they're doing and why. And I need you to have, speak up a little bit. It's real noisy here. OK. I believe chaos is when people don't know why they're doing the things they're doing and aren't doing it out of love for each other and themselves. Any remedies? Remedies, mm -hmm. you must love yourself and do everything after that for yourself and others out of love for everyone. That is just wonderful. Thank you. And I wish you well on your you. cross-country trip. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, we run into another friend here. And the question I put to people today is, what does chaos mean to you? Chaos to me is... Um, being a wife and mother, and I don't think there is any cure for that except for enjoying it. Enjoy? Now, that's a different way to look at it. If oh. your life is not chaotic, then I don't think you're really in... I don't know. I really don't know how to explain it. I know that with chaos comes all of life's joys and 
trials and tribulations, and without them, it's really meaningless. Oh, well, that's a very positive outlook. Oh, well, we, we look into that, so thank you. You're welcome. I think people today, uh, what chaos means to them. So what does it mean to you, dear? Chaos. Chaos means like trouble that people get into that they shouldn't. And I think that chaos shouldn't be around. I think what people should do is they should, they should um, stay out of trouble and they should get into you programs. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So if I, if I it's made you, if I put you in charge for one day, how would you fix everything? How would I fix everything? Gee, how would I fix everything? Not that easy, is it? Not on TV. Um, how would I fix everything? Well, what I would do is I would, before the people start trouble, I would stop it and I would show them the right way instead of the wrong way. That's very good advice. I thank you very much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. And that was chaos as the, some of the local people saw it. Mm -hmm. Now, we looked up chaos in a dictionary last night. Yes, we did. And you, you want me to remember that, right? Yes. <laughs> could you, could you? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, there's some chaos for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the dictionary had, I'm sorry, I just don't remember it. I have it written down off camera, but I, I didn't bring it up with me. Um, I remember some of it. How's okay. That? I'm that you, you start, and maybe between the two mm -hmm. of us, we'll come up with it. Yeah, I'm that foreigner, you know, and <laughs> what, what the English language means uh -huh. and what the American language is two different things. Right. Now, <coughs> excuse me, chaos is something that you have no control over. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, natural disasters. Like we showed in the opening shot, mm -hmm. volcanoes, mm -hmm. wars. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> that wasn't what the dictionary. The dictionary had to do with. Uh, are you bringing us one? You Bless your heart. Total disorder. Thank you. Total disorder. Why? Thank you. Thank you. And this is Webster's uh, number two, New Riverside Pocket Dictionary. And we will find it and hopefully I can read it. Chaos, total disorder. Total disorder. Total disorder. Um, the one that was in, in the dictionary I had yesterday had to do with, uh, they used the biblical reference mm -hmm. of how the world was prior to it being... Utter disorder. Utter <laughs> disorder. <laughs> if you'd like to look in the blue bag, it's, there's another one there. <laughs> I don't think it's in here. I no, think it's that's in the other okay. room. We can just do okay. it like it is. Okay, so utter, utter and total disorder. Um, so you see it as more in, in the world mm -hmm. perspective, um, as the natural disasters and, and the unnatural disasters, the man-made disasters. And I see it as that way as well, but I also see it from, a, from an inner perspective of how we, we create our own chaos. Mm -hmm just from the thing, how we react to things on a daily, moment-to-moment -moment basis. Like this total no. and utter disaster. Yeah, cool. now, er earlier today I said, gee, everything was so orderly. I said, this is too easy. <laughs> and, and, so, and so here we are, but you know, things are always guided the way, mm -hmm. the way that they're supposed to be. Um, I did a show with a young man, his name is Lucius Richards, and the name of that show was actually E.T.'s in the media. And one of the things that he had objected to was financial backers to control what what is important and what isn't. And um, the, today's date, uh, since we taped in the show today, is the 19th of July. Mm -hmm. And um, at this particular time, um, John Kennedy and his family is still missing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And th what that brought to my mind was how how that really fed the chaos. Uh, we feel very, very bad for this having happened. 
in all the, the commercials that they paid for regular commercials, mm -hmm. it now became a big thing. Now they're getting prime time. Mm -hmm. um, and I was listening this morning um, prior to our coming over, and the way the announcers were talking about later on this mm -hmm. evening, the not discounting the tragedy that the family feels, mm -hmm. or or even if it is a tragedy, um, mm -hmm. the the pain that they're going to of missing their family members, but the way the uh, commentator was presenting the new show that was going to be on later this evening, and they talked about the tragedy that has followed the family over the centuries, mm -hmm. and and about um, the curse on the family, mm -hmm. um, and how they they've persevered and. But, but the way it was presented in such a dramatic way that it was taking away from the personal feelings of the exactly. family mm -hmm. and making it a, a prime time show mm -hmm. to, for you to watch. Mm -hmm. And that to me felt chaotic inside. Mm -hmm. My initial reaction was in the, in the stomach area and, um, and I just wanted to turn it off and not participate in that sensationalism that's what it is yeah and, yeah, and so to mm -hmm. me sensationalism promotes chaos mm -hmm. as well so so sometimes we can just promote that and then create it yeah mm -hmm. yes our new studio opened safeco field mm -hmm. opened and that's the weekend they decided to close the bridge uh, traffic backed up same thing here wow. yeah and, and like, like the lady uh, uh, with the curlers said, you know, uh, being on the freeway. Mm -hmm. And, um, but you and I went on a cross country trip and we went to the desert and it might not be a freeway, but they drove crazy too, didn't they? They did, yes, mm -hmm. they did. <laughs> one of the, they had warned us about traveling on one of the highway mm -hmm. sections because it was a very straight road, but it was quite heavily used and it was only two lanes mm -hmm. and there were always someone who was in more even of a hurry than the one in front mm -hmm. of them. Yeah, so that's pretty chaotic, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, then the lady at the doctor's office, her chaos was to be a wife and a mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I like the way she could see that you don't, you can change it around and, and um, get rewards from it mm -hmm. in, a, in a sense without it without it getting to be totally destructive. And then the young man at the end, um, mm -hmm. his solution was to stop it before it got stop that it way. Stop it before it started, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So they, they gave some thought to that. They did. Yes. Now, before we get to the solution, um, maybe mm -hmm. we should address the times that we live in? Yeah, let's do that. Would you like to tackle that? No. <laughs> no? Okay. You start No, I'll follow right okay, along. Okay, that's what we'll do then. <laughs> we, live, we live in a time where Mother Earth itself is going to yeah, okay. change us. Now, to us that would be, could be chaotic because mm -hmm. even though we are so very important, we these just very small particles of, yeah. of, the, whole, um, of the whole universe here. Which reminds me of something that we talked yesterday when they're talking about uh, the universe started with chaos. We don't agree with that, do we? No, that, that was what the, um, the other definition was. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe I didn't agree with that, and that's why I didn't bring the paper up to read that's, it. That's possibility. That's probably mm -hmm. why. Um, that uh, it was utter chaos be prior to the universe being developed. Mm -hmm. and utter disorder. And I... Um, as it was developed, I can't see how it could be developed in chaos. Mm -hmm. May, um, because if you have all this, the planets and the stars mm -hmm. and whatever else is out there going zippity, zip, 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 and, and it could run into each other and collide. Exactly. It seems like it would have to be made in quite an orderly fashion. Um, the animals that were originally made and how they've evolved and come to what we know today mm -hmm. Um, I don't think that was a hit and miss thing either. I think it was quite. <laughs> no, I, no. We, we're still looking for the purse, but that's okay. We, <laughs> we, we can just work around it. Yeah. That's wonderful, dear. Thank you. It's a blue, <laughs> blue square overnight type bag. But that's okay. I that's don't think okay. we need it anymore. <laughs> yeah. We found it. Oh, cool. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> 
Um, so the universe is, uh, in my opinion, is in perfect order. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll agree with you quite, mm -hmm. quite well on that one. When we first discussed that, it was like, well, wait a minute, I think I want to disagree. But when you come around to the, to the, um, the, the orderliness of it, yeah. Yeah, it, it's all in the word, like this, mm -hmm. uh, you spent the night with a friend last night? Yes. And uh, so on your way out, what did I say to you? Do you remember that? Last night? Mm -hmm. No. I said, if you stay at a lady's house, when you come in in the morning, make sure you knock me up. Oh, that's right, yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> the ink, and I knew what you meant because of the ink that's quite English. Mm -hmm, it's quite um, English. They just use that term. And here that has a different connotation in totally American different. English or mm -hmm. U.S. English. And yeah. so even in language, there can be some, uh, can, we can create chaos. Going into by, disorder. Mm -hmm. mm. Now back to the fears of the earth here for a minute. Um, because we do live here and we are part of this, this order, some things could really appear to be chaotic, but it really, really isn't. And what we have to remember is that we are a guest, an inhabitant. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that we chose to be here at this time. Yes. Um, when, when you were talking about um, living on this earth at this time and the promotion out there of the Y2K fear, mm -hmm. um, out of that chaotic movement is coming perhaps um, people are making arrangements for themselves ra and depending mm -hmm. on themselves so there's that's a good thing that's a good mm -hmm. thing coming out of it um, being aware not let it not relying totally on government and I think it'll also bring people together if if, if it does come about mm -hmm. um, it would bring people together to work together they don't have to go into the helter skelter of it they can just kind of band together and work. So there's many different aspects and different realities to it and mm -hmm. different solutions. Uh, also this morning we mentioned the fact that because, uh, because we are able to create chaos, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have jobs. Yes, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're talking about the security in uh, industry mm -hmm. this morning and that was born out of fear or chaos. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's a quite a large industry, so perhaps it, uh, it seems to need to be perpetuated more mm -hmm. so that it provides more jobs. And, but it, it, even though it was born of chaos, and, it, and it, to me, it feeds the chaos. It feeds the fear. Mm -hmm. And it's an industry I, I don't think is actually needed, and I'm sure many will disagree with me on that. But Probably uh, so. Probably mm -hmm. so, so. But that's okay, especially the people that are in the industry that, that have the statistics to back up mm -hmm. that they are, they are desperately needed to protect us. And but we don't like our cars. We drove all mm -hmm. over the country and no. just knew that everything it's was going to be fine. Yeah. yeah, I don't get into that fear. I don't have a fear of, um, I drove from Texas to Alaska in the middle of winter uh, with my dog, and I don't know how many people had told me along the way, oh, don't drive through L.A., don't drive through this area, don't drive through that area. Um, what if your car breaks down? And, and I know those are all safety concerns for me, mm -hmm. but they weren't my concerns, and I didn't take them on. Mm -hmm. And I went from point A to point B. I had no problem. Um, I think I met one person that was frowning, and we had a moment of conversation, and both of us went away smiling. Mm -hmm. But there was, um, there just wasn't any chaos involved. I don't know how that happened, but well, yes, I do know how it happened. Um, I projected it that way, and that's how it happened. I, I created it that for, that way for me. Okay, now I was in some situations last year that I, I did not create. Mm -hmm. uh, Want to refresh your memory? I'm talking about the tornadoes. Yes. Um, Everywhere I went, they had a tornado. It's like I was the tornado lady. I don't know if they followed me or if I, <laughs> if I just happened to be in the wrong place. And there was that one in mm -hmm. Lamar, Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, it headed straight for the station, uh, for the bus, uh, the truck stop that I was at. Mm -hmm. And I was a little rattled, and I called you. Yep, I wasn't home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you left a very um, stressful message on my answering mm -hmm. machine. Um, but in the long run, you, you have your firm belief that you're protected mm -hmm. and you didn't, your work isn't finished. Mm -hmm. So you weren't gonna leave through that. 
and I think that's where your strength came in, in um, not stepping into that chaos and running about frightened and um, letting it, letting the fear take over completely. You were able to kind of re react in a manner that um, didn't feed into that fear and, and that chaos that was there. But I was rattled for a long, long time, long time after that. It was just that last one there. Uh, but, but, we, yeah, what, but you what were we rattled, mm -hmm. but you continued on. You didn't stop what you were doing. Yeah, you're right. You were, able to you, you were able to draw on that and continue on and use it as a teaching tool and a story. That's true, yeah. yeah. So I, I think what Monica's saying, I needed to be there. And she's <laughs> absolutely right, because yes. that's where I went into the trucker mm -hmm. that uh, was... Uh, needed to love saying rum well, <laughs> yeah, right. I wouldn't have ran into any other yeah. time. But we just asked people, um, is there a way out and how you want to handle that? They didn't have a clue. Mm -hmm. We looked to see if we could maybe get away from the windows and, mm -hmm. and hoped for the best. Mm -hmm. And the tornado split and Wait. hit on left to the left and to the right of the, of the station. Mm -hmm. and, and here you are still. I'm still talking about it. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, so that's wonderful. What would be the most chaotic thing to you? The most chaotic mm -hmm. thing to me? Ooh, boy. Um, a natural disaster mm -hmm. that um, I didn't have any way of immediately mm -hmm. finding the rest of my family. That would be quite chaotic to me. Mm -hmm. That would be a very stressful, very, very stressful. Mm -hmm. But well, you, you live in Anchorage, you have earthquakes. We have earthquakes mm -hmm. somewhere in Alaska every day. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, and for f where, I, where I live, it's earthquakes. Where um, our son lives, it's um, pipelines that explode and um, um, floods. Mm -hmm. Where our daughter lives, it's tornadoes <laughs> and floods. And where our other daughter lives, it's hurricanes and floods. Mm -hmm. so, so so everybody has their own wave yeah. of chaos. Yeah, mm -hmm. they do. We've, we've put contingency plans into effect. Mm -hmm. and, and knowing that um, telephone lines might not be available, mm -hmm. we have, we've had plans were how we could contact one another. And so and we're working on developing our mental telepathy so we'll know that one another has survived or is all right. Well yeah and one of the things what we you know this the beginning of the show really showed that is that we have to know the definition of a word. Mm -hmm. So we don't jump the gun. Yeah. So to speak, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because like the people in the clip in my opinion, they were describing stressful situations mm -hmm. more than more than chaos. More than chaos. And here again is when when I was in Europe, there was terrorism. You get ready to go to the store, we would flip a coin to see which shopping center to go to because they could have just blown up. Mm -hmm. You know, I was at the Frankfurt Airport and the Brussels Airport when when the bombs went off. So uh, that was pretty ugly too. You know. Mm -hmm. And, and so determine what the word is that you want to use for that so you can comprehend it when the time comes. You see? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. I'll agree with you again. Well, <laughs> wonderful. So, should we work on some solutions now? Yeah. Um, yes, I think that would be a great idea. Um, one of the things we, we, we mentioned about you are concerned uh, with your family, that and you're both in the same city, on how you would get to them, mm -hmm. yeah, or how they would get to to you if um, you had an earthquake here this summer. We and had a we had a you something. have a big mm -hmm. hill and and no, you don't have water separ separating the two of you at the time. But with an earthquake, you may have water mm -hmm. separating the two of you, and and your standard way of getting in touch with one another could be totally wiped out for days. Mm -hmm. So do you have a little plan how you could get? We have a plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so we all said. And uh, here again, the name of the show is a wave called K uh, named Chaos. Mm -hmm. And um, when we picked that title, we were sort of 
uh, visualizing like a skateboard of some kind. And sometimes you have small waves, yep. and sometimes you have large waves. So the best thing you can do is fasten your seatbelt and go with it. Uh, you, I, in some of my classes, I use the um, analogy of when you're riding on a, a roller coaster and, and you're kind of apprehensive as you're going to the top, and when it comes time to go down, you're going to go down. You're going to mm -hmm. ride it down because you can't get off at the top, so you might as well just put your arms up and go wee until you get to the bottom. Exactly. Um, and mm -hmm. and maybe make a plan on the way down, but be as flexible as possible, and to remember to breathe. When we get tense, mm -hmm. we <gasps> and we don't breathe, and um, it's like we shut off our functions. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like maybe have a little flashing neon sign up there to say breathe, and then go on. Yeah, well, it's a little simple one that you can use. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm here to tell you, not being able to breathe is not fun. Oh, yes. so, so you have to, yeah. uh, it can be pretty scary. We did a show and I had a little attack where I couldn't, uh, where I couldn't breathe. And that, no, that was not fun. And, yeah. you know, but we did, we did work around that. Um, try not to get paranoid. Mm -hmm. that's, that's another thing. And as your um, another one is, if you feel your body tensing up, mm -hmm. is is kind of and relax it so that you are are more back in a sense in control. Mm -hmm. um, we're just not paralyzed. And try to remember some of the things. Um, um, I've been in hurricanes and and floods and mm -hmm. and tornadoes and. Um, yeah, tornadoes are whirlwind. Tornadoes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when it when it's going on, it's like, now what were those safety rules? Where was I supposed to go? What was I supposed to do? So maybe learn some of those safety things and have them imprinted. Yeah, so, so they become part of... Yeah, like, you know, they work mm -hmm. with the kids, kids in school and have a drill. Mm -hmm. What are you supposed to do? In a fire, they train them drop and roll. Mm -hmm. So that... Um, and... Um, your family was talking about that the other night. Everybody under the table when the, mm -hmm. she grabbed her children and got under the heavy table during the earthquake. So she reacted from things she had learned as a protection. Uh, yeah, that was like, like a learned behavior. Mm -hmm. But you know, um, myself, I prefer to go my, with my instinct because, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you know that yourself when we was traveling, yeah. um, sometimes, uh, I don't remember where we were, but I moved over just a little. And as we looked up, a truck had came over in the lane. Mm -hmm. So you just act on instinct. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't have time to explain to the next person why you're doing I a did certain that, thing. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and then for the, for the friends that argue with, with each other all the time, if that's not a time to argue. No, mm -hmm. it is not. Yeah. Um, when we were driving through Boise, Idaho, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you were blinded by the sun and you were doing the mm -hmm. driving and you just put your faith in l letting me, I could see and mm -hmm. I was on the passenger I side. Couldn't. She just held on to the wheel, breathed, listened to me and kept on driving and you're doing fine, you're in the lanes, move a little right, move a little left and we got through that whole thing um, because there wasn't any place to pull off and wait for that sun to go down. Exactly, so I probably created a little chaos on the freeway and a <laughs> lot of fear with the other people, except they did know I couldn't see. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, Actually, we I that. think by your just continued moving and driving at a steady pace, you you didn't create the, yeah. ca the chaos. The emotional chaos was inside the, mm -hmm. the vehicle with us, but we still persevered, and that was acting on instinct. Yeah, I just couldn't see anything, So, but there was Monica, and uh, like I said, she said, breathe, breathe, and we did that. <laughs> and. Um, so then the next time I came through there, I very vividly remember that. Um, um, my uh, teacher, when I was taught to drive, mm -hmm. he was very verbal. And he taught me in the sense of get, um, when you're driving down the road, some people look at the hood of their car. They don't see beyond the hood of their car. And when he would catch my eyes going to the hood, which would be limiting my vision and, and making me an, un he f an unsafe driver, he would say, eyes up, eyes up, eyes up. And to this day, when I'm driving, and if I drop my eyes, um, I'll hear his voice going, eyes up and around that curve, instead of staring at the road, trying to go around the curve this way, to get my vision way out in front. 
and, and get have time to get a little bit more prepared for what was coming at me. Mm -hmm. And the same with making right-hand turns. I had to go around the same block 200 times before I got it. The driver's lessons? Yes. Oh, because my. Because he didn't want me to swerve left to go right. And, and we do that at times without even being aware of doing it. And when we do, sometimes we frighten the other driver mm -hmm. that's, that's coming up on our, our left when we swerve like that to go this way. So that was one of his. And, and when I'm driving, I can still hear his voice. Um, ga get your eyes up, gas, give it gas, go, and I'll go right around a curve real, real easy rather than <laughs> to go around. So, so some of that is, is training and it keeps me out of chaos. And some is an instinct as well. That was very descriptive, so we could even apply that to emotions, you mm -hmm. know, once, once you know that, just curve, 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 you know? curve, curve, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and eyes just, up and around, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, training like that um, and things we learn through life, I think some of it does become instinctual and saves us mm -hmm. rather than just throwing up your hands and go, ah, and getting hit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did that in Ireland, though. <laughs> Someone else drove for me in Ireland. Mm -hmm. Well, I have some driving stories, too, but I'm not going to go into that because that's going to be a whole show. <laughs> Uh, my, not so much my driving, well, a little bit, but it's mostly, you know, my reactions and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, since we do live on this earth, you know, we will have earthquakes, we will have volcanoes and floods and hurricanes. And wars. And wars. That, yeah, that's where I was going. Uh, so these, these part are part of the natural evolution, you know, of our universe. And then we have man-made chaos that we can do something about. Yeah. Um, in the opening shot, uh, it was pretty drastic. Uh, we had, we had, um, we had riots. We had crime. We had mass graves. You know. Volcanoes. Uh, but no, volcanoes oh. is natural. I'm talking oh, about man-made man -made? about man-made mm -hmm. things now. Where those are the things we can work. Uh, uh, we can work on and sort of prevent, mm -hmm. you know, and if, if we just plant one seed um, anywhere with, with, with anybody, then, you know, we have done our job. Uh, in, that, in that chart, there is somewhere over there, there is a little girl coming out of the store with groceries. Well, they're actually looting, you yes. see, so she didn't go, she didn't go grocery shopping, and you, See, um, you have hurricane victims, which mm -hmm. is man-made, I mean, excuse me, uh, nature-made. And so there's just all kinds of different things that can be avoided. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, sometimes we can diffuse on, on, a, on a smaller scale. We can, we can diffuse a situation with a smile mm -hmm. um, or not retorting mm -hmm. to something that someone that we perceive as an insult, um, as just letting it go. Mm -hmm. And then there's a ripple effect and we never see what goes, what happens beyond our, our immediate exactly. um, presence. A couple of weeks ago, I got a call from Portland, Oregon, and I didn't know where I was ever going to work it that in and tell that story, but I think this is a good time. Um, one of, the, one of the friends uh, called me to see if I could help him translate something. My, my German is very limited, mm -hmm. you know. But in essence, what had taken place is there is a lot of Kosnova refugees, a whole group of them in the Portland area. So the Muslim community decided um, to sponsor them, so they made sure they had adequate housing and food and everything that they needed. Well, in the meantime, another group of people uh, came in to invite them to go mm -hmm. to church. Well, uh, I don't know if they if that was willing on their part or if they just overlooked that this could create a problem. Well, of course, the refugees didn't want to do that because that's why they started the war in the first place over issues like that. Mm -hmm. So they said, no, you know, we're going to just keep doing that. And so what happened was some of the, the, the opposite group got together and they was going to go to their house and explain to them you know, we think that you would be more comfortable or more happier living on this other side of town. And so my job was, I was asked to translate a letter 
to the refugees, uh, telling them that in America we have the right to say no. Yes. But imagine how frightening and chaotic it must have been mm -hmm. to these people to have just came over here thinking they got away from all of this. And then someone wants them to move. And there is no more than three weeks later, it goes right back into this vicious circle. And uh, so, of course, I did write the letter as well as I could. And from what I understand, it came out right. Um, being judgmental comes in that category. Oh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it does. It adds to it as well. Mm -hmm. And another one that really adds to it is needing to be right. That's a good one. Yes. Yeah, let's go there. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if, if my opinion is right mm -hmm. and it disagrees with yours and vice versa, we could get into arguments, mm -hmm. which could escalate into a fight, which could escalate into bringing our brothers into it, into a vendetta, mm -hmm. when the, which could escalate into a war. Um, so perhaps it's just okay. We could maybe make it okay for the other person to be right without us being, without our opinions being wrong. Just agree to disagree mm -hmm. and not need to convert w someone to your way of thinking. Mm -hmm. So that's one way. But see, I could talk and write about then, uh -huh. but then that's sort of opposite from what we're trying to teach people, you know, talk it out and don't, don't keep okay. it in. Well, I'm not opposed to talking it out mm -hmm. at all. It's just a matter of my husband and I have a couple of things that we don't agree on. Mm -hmm. So we've agreed that just to disagree. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. I don't have to convert him to my way, and he doesn't have to convert me to his way of thinking. We'll just have our each ways and let it be. That's just We're wonderful. not imposing on each other. Mm -hmm. So maybe we help the lady um, with her chaos a little just by, by talking about that, about being a wife and a mother. Could be. Mm -hmm. So maybe we put something there. When um, a few years back in a course I had taken, um, the instructor had said, um, do we really know what's right? Mm -hmm. And people popped up with, well, murder is wrong and death, uh, killing is wrong and stealing is wrong. And, and right away they all got into what's, what wrongs were right, <laughs> mm -hmm. or what rights were wrong. And, and, um, and his thing was, just really think about it. Do we really know what's right? We know what we've been taught is right. And we, we know what we've read, and we know what we disagree with. But do we really, really, really know what is right? Especially mm -hmm. what is right for someone else. Then us being intuitives, uh, very psychic, mm -hmm. um, sometimes we know things ahead of time. Uh, we have been granted the wisdom to discuss some things and some we don't. Yeah, and I get real frustrated when I go to, uh, to the supermarket and I see the tabloids. Mm -hmm. Because that is really breeding chaos. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. It's another industry. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You have people very religious. We not, I'm not going to go to the religion, but the thing is here, they, they have managed to use religion and mingle it in with the commercializing mm -hmm. and things like that. And, and, and supposing, you know, we did believe the world is going to end in a couple of months. Why would we want to try anything? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want to pay my bills. No, I wouldn't either. <laughs> it's going to end. What difference? What difference what does diff it, it yeah. make? Mm -hmm. But in the um, in the meantime, life goes on. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that would be the time probably to 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 think what what would I really like to do for these last few mm -hmm. uh, months rather than add to the helter skelter hecticness that would be involved mm -hmm. with that. So when you have very reputable people uh, saying these things. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, people pay attention, you know, but it it concerns me a little bit. It concerns mm -hmm. me as well because it takes away from the quality of life. I know one gentleman; uh, he's in his high seventies now. For the last twenty years, he's been worried about something falling out of the sky and hitting him. Wasn't there an, an elderly gentleman too? His main concern was if all these, if refugees came in and foreigners came in. 
um, how he would lose his pension check, that there wouldn't be enough funds for him to live on. I'm not familiar with him, but I know I had a call from a man that wanted to know what we was going to do about the aliens. He didn't want them, another species to another come species. in to take his food stamps. Yeah. But same, same, same yeah. principle, you know. So I don't think those are really... They're, I think that will fit in... Um, just give me a moment I didn't know that thought time. Just, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you <laughs> thank you for reading that one mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the, the friends are really uh, familiar with the fact that sometimes we go away mm -hmm. and get the rest of the answer, so we slow, it seems like we're slowing down, but not really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we, were, we were thinking of solutions, mm -hmm. and um, I don't have a magic wand to just wave and make everything mm -hmm. perfect, and then if I did, it would be my perfection, which would perhaps anger someone mm -hmm. else, so um, be kind. Be kind. Be kind. Be, mm -hmm. Being kind will help. Uh, being considerate, perhaps, mm -hmm. will be a, another way to stay out of it. For me, um, when the talk shows, if I have the television oh, on, that's and the a talk good shows one. are yeah. on, and they have controversial subjects mm -hmm. on, and they'll have families that have uh, controversy in their family, I feel that tension in myself, and I just turn off the television. Um, and perhaps and wish them the best that mm -hmm. they'll work it out. Um, but rather than keep me all hyped up all day from that, that that's one of my solutions. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't think I'm ignoring it or make, putting my head in the sand that it doesn't exist. I'm, I'm aware of it existing. I choose not to participate in it. Mm -hmm. And then there are times I catch myself participating. And then I can kind of just change it. I think we were talking about that, um, our minds, um, for, for me, I have a picture of my mind as a large sky, mm -hmm. and these clouds kind of float in and out. Some of them are stormy and just like na Mother Nature, and I can, they'll either come in and I can just let them flit on by. Oh, I don't like the way that guy's dressed. Oh, that's just a thought. Mm -hmm. I don't have to turn it into a fear because of how he's dressed or what his appearance is. And, oh, that's, that's just a thought. That's just an opinion. I don't have to let it hang there and get a hold of me and get into the chaos of it. But it takes a while to get to that it line of thinking. It does. Mm -hmm. We can it just does. get up one morning and say, well, we're not going to feed the chaos. It really takes preparation work. and work, lots it takes of work. work. Mm -hmm. um, I had, I was driving. And um, driving seems to be an area where people really get offended. Mm -hmm. um, and a man, he just had to be in front of me. And I felt that, and I wanted to ruh, 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 and get after him and chase him down and say, how dare you? And I went, oh, he just may need to be in a hurry. Mm -hmm. And actually it took three seconds that I, I was delayed by three seconds, if that long. And maybe he needed those three seconds. but. It took me um, three or four seconds to switch my my way of thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then we have to keep in mind uh, that our skateboards are different sizes. Uh -huh. you know, they're different shapes. And um, the beaches that we ride our waves on mm -hmm. are different. So we have to try to learn to adjust to our environment. Constantly. And the weather yeah. and anything like that. And just, you know, if we don't, not comfortable standing on it, just, that's what I would do, I'd probably sit on it, <laughs> or, or, or start out just, that's right, <laughs> laying on it, yeah. and so whatever you're comfortable with, and we can just, with mass consciousness, we can really, really change things, mm -hmm. uh, and it's done all the time, people have, uh, it's around the world, they have prayer circles, they have, um, um, moments of, moments of silence, moments of, mm -hmm. um, Unity. Yeah. If, if, yeah. If, if if somebody does the same thing worth, worthwhile, mm -hmm. and and um, uh, uh, Lop Singh Rampa that we talk about all the time, he had some wonderful books and he gave some wonderful solutions. Mm -hmm. He taught breathing. He taught. Yeah, oh yes, he's a real good mm -hmm. breather. Yeah. <laughs> he, um, that's right. Breathing. A, breathing actually can offer many solutions mm -hmm. to many different things, but as we're not taught 
as an infant, how to exactly. breathe. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Kind of just kind of, okay, breathe. Uh, and however we can get the air in there, that's how we continue on. Yeah, because it flips our air, because originally we, we breathe with our... That's that word, diaphragm. Diaphragm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then, um, but when you're born and they pick you up and boom, you know, mm -hmm. it, it takes you out of sequence because it's you're... not normal mm -hmm. for someone to beat on you and you try to catch. You know, to that's catch almost your chaotic. Breath. It is. First it's breath. scary. <laughs> yeah. It must be scary. I don't remember it, but uh, it must be totally scary to just come out of a safe environment and, oh, and nice here and warm you are, and you know, and say, <laughs> welcome to the world. It's a beautiful place. And so it takes us a, almost a whole life to realize it is a beautiful place, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't weaken. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and if you do, you can start over. Take a moment, start over. Well, that's true. <laughs> um, just constantly readjust. Mm -hmm. um, I think when we, we run into rigidity and we get kind of locked into a position, that adds to the chaos. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do, eventually, uh, we're going to ask Monica to come back because you do fly in and out of here quite often. And, and they have specials. And they have specials. <laughs> so next special is that's available. We're going to ask you to come back. Okay. And then maybe we'll tackle some little bitty issues. How's okay. that? Okay. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting. I'd like that. I was get the big stuff out of the way. Okay. Out, out of the way first. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you're going to... When you go home, you you have a, a healing a healing center. I do, mm -hmm. um, I do hands on healing and psychological or not psychological. Well, it is spiritual counseling. Mm -hmm. um, I'm never. People ask me what I do, and I really I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, a facilitator. I stand with, witness mm -hmm. to your own healing abilities. I think that's what I do about the best. Mm -hmm is bear, stand witness to your healing abilities, or one's healing abilities. Monica's also the, net, uh, the person that connects Olympia with Anchorage. Um, she sees to it that these shows are being shared with the friends in Anchorage. I do. Yes, yes you do. Yes, so I you're do. really my counterpart <laughs> in, yeah. In, yeah. In, in some ways. And so we appreciate that because as a result of that, um, I ran into an Anchorage lady here, yes. and she knew exactly who I was, mm -hmm. so the world is getting smaller all the time. It is. Mm -hmm. um, and you did a show about that, didn't Sp Big Big, big globe, small world. Yeah. Yes, we did. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is a small world. Mm -hmm. So with awareness and love yes. and uh, consideration and uh, allowing to people to be who they are, we can really cut down on the chaos. Yes, I think mm -hmm. so. I think that sums it up quite nicely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, not Simplicity. perfect, but we can. Yeah. We really, really can. So when you when you have your talk with your creator or um, whoever you have your conversations with, you might want to mention that that you're way on the way to to change the world one one person at a time. And that made me think of Lily Tomlin's. Um, I think it's she who said that that when we um, pray to God, it's totally acceptable, but when God talks to us, we're crazy. So perhaps exactly. we should all be walking around crazy, listening for, listening. Our, for our Creator's words. Mm -hmm. and on the Akhenaten show, we was talking about, uh, he was talking about his angel named Joy, mm -hmm. and how sometimes you think we're talking to ourselves, we might have brought some joy yes. in our lives. We saw a man yesterday that yes. was just as happy talking to himself, yeah. and we just acknowledged him and we waved at him. Yeah. You know, and so it's what you project. That's yeah, mm -hmm. I think you, that's quite accurate. What we're projecting, mm -hmm. we project a little joy and happiness. And somewhere along the line, we may pass somebody in the supermarket who's going this way, and and they'll catch a little bit of that energy and maybe mm -hmm. a little little slight grin and give them a little perk. So on a small scale, I think we try really really making an effort to do our, mm -hmm. to do in our part. And our wonderful staff here, they're always ready to accommodate any subject we was trying to present to you. And so all is left to do for today really is to say good night, um, uh, goodbye. And we will see you next week. And tell all the friends in Anchorage, we tell them hello. Mm -hmm. I will. And so I think we sort of going to leave you with these thoughts for today. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.
Quellschau. Ja. 